What is up guys, that's it here. The Prox Support Crusader is a complement to the Static Charge Monk and is currently considered a top tier support in the metagame. Check out how one is built. The build rushes headlong into battle, joining the ranks of frontline supports like the Healing Monk and into the pile of monsters created by the support barbarian. Compared to a bursty composition with a Sun Wuko Exploding Calm Monk, a Prox Support Crusader comp relies heavily on kiting enemies forward and consistent damage over time from the static charge procs. While spamming Condemn, you will attack regularly with Smite, both to replenish Wrath and to create an efficient, relentless duo of high proc coefficient skills. To keep yourself alive, you will be using the survival staples Iron Skin and Akarat's Champion, which are to be used on cooldown. Finally, use your Laws of Valor and Judgment buffs whenever available to benefit your entire party. Contrary to Crusader tradition, Condemn will not be used with the Signature Vacuum. Instead, you will make use of the proc coefficient superiority of Reciprocate. Towering at 166% proc rate, this rune will take advantage of several beneficial factors. The circular AoE of the Condemn skill, the tripling effect of the Blade of Prophecy weapon, the cooldown to spend their transformation from Fighter's Wrath, and the fire skill resource cost reduction of the Cinder Code. When put together, they turn Reciprocate into a spammable field of death for the static charge to reap. Fulfilling the role of a Wrath Generator and a second static charge trigger, Smite takes a slot for two simple reasons. The high proc coefficient for the sheer number of targets it affects. Its coverage is extended even further by the Surge Rune and the Golden Scourge Flail, and with resource regeneration improved by the Righteousness passive, successfully counters the high costs of Condemn Spam. The Crusader is known to offer some of the strongest damage buffs for a reason, with two solid crit boosters under his belt. The first is the critical rune of Laws of Valor. The low itself will provide a passive increase to the attack speed of nearby allies, but the true powerhouse is in the active component of the skill, increasing crit damage by 100% for the entire group. This potent buff is the reason to strive for a permanent uptime through Long Arm of the Law. The second is Judgment. Similarly to the old favorite Shield Glare, it offers AoE crowd control. Judgment, however, takes the form of a circular 20-yard snare on a chosen location instead of centered on you. The resolved rune will provide 20% increased crit chance against affected enemies, synergizing with the Laws of Valor buff for a constant streak of high crit numbers. On top of that, you will be taking advantage of the free Debilitate rune coming from the Sacred Harness belt, adding some needed damage reduction in the mitigation stacking 2.3 group meta. To survive the frontline in high difficulty content, you will be stacking a lot of toughness on gear, but it is necessary to supplement those defenses with the tank rune of Akarat's champion, Prophet, strengthening you with 150% additional armor and another life to fall back to, as well as 5 wrath per second for continued condemn spam. This skill becomes irreplaceable. While permanent uptime is hard to achieve in a setup without the account set, you will get close through cooldown reduction stacking. Iron Skin is a staple mitigation tool, cutting incoming damage in half. While DPS builds often fall back to flash for maneuverability, you will be incorporating illusory boots for the same purpose, so take advantage of the hefty 7 second duration of the Steel Skin rune. Do not hesitate to reapply Iron Skin when endangered, as the build tackles elemental damage affixes in the typical support fashion. Head on. This concludes the overview of the active skills, now let's just look through the passives. Fervor is the one-hander counterpart to Heavenly Strength, shaping the traditionally slow and hard-hitting Crusader into an attack speed and cooldown reduction specialist. This passive makes a tight fit into the support setup where any source of additional cooldown reduction is welcome. Damage bonuses are the ace of the sleeve of support crusaders, and Long Arm of the Law ensures your Laws of Valor critical stays active throughout the rift. With proper itemization, you will be able to reapply critical long before the 10 seconds active effect, extended by the passive, wears off. Finally, the indestructible passive ensures that you live through the highly damaging environments of greater rifts, while Prophet gives you a second life and is up for the majority of the rift 
perfect overlap of Akarat's champion is unrealistic, especially in experienced farming setups. Thus, another cheat death on a 60 second cooldown is a useful safety net. Spending Wrath at the whopping 40 per cast, Condemn demands a lot from a non-unstoppable force build. Part of it will be cut down by Cinder Code, but the rest will have to be regained the old-fashioned way, through generator spam. The underused Righteousness passive brings more rough value from your smites, finding a niche in a build that struggles for resource management. Similarly to other supports, the Prop Crusader mixes craftable sets into a high toughness, bonus experience gain, cooldown reducing and attack speed increasing concoction. The core sets are Born's Command and Kane's Destiny, introduced with the Born's chest and shoulders and Kane's gloves and pants respectively. Their three-piece bonuses are obtained through the use of a Ring of Royal Grandeur in Kanai's Cube. Born's set provides additional toughness in the form of life percentage, 10% cooldown reduction and 20% bonus experience. Kane's set completes the picture with another 50% experience on top, and even its attack speed bonuses are not wasted. Faster smites mean more static charge procs. Rolls-wise aims strictly for toughness and prioritize high vitality, all resistance and cooldown reduction where applicable. Resource cost reduction can also be added on the shoulders and gloves, alongside cooldown reduction, to assist with wrath management. Bonus experience is top priority in speed rifting, while maximum CDR is imperative in GR progression and no other helm will empower your socket bonuses quite like Leoric's Crown. Essentially doubling the effect of the gems slotted in your helm, your Leoric's Crown will bump experience up by 82% with a Flawless Royal Ruby and CDR by 25% with a Flawless Royal Diamond. The feed slot will be taken by Illusory Boots, obtained through the completion of Act 2 Bounties, this legendary item allows you unparalleled freedom of movement. The ability to maneuver through enemies unhindered and ignore waller affixes is crucial for support crusaders, where positioning to maximize procs is key. Avoiding the synergy with falling sword altogether, support crusaders incorporate the season 4 exclusive sacred harness for a sole purpose. It allows you two runes for the price of a single skill slot, providing the damage mitigation of debilitate for free. This belt allows you to improve damage through resolve as well. For non-seasonal characters, the cooldown reduction staple Vigilante belt or the toughness powerhouse string of ears make for decent replacements. With no crowd control to trigger strong arm bracers and little reason to improve your rock solid toughness with ancient party defenders, the proc support crusader finds an unlikely fit in glass cannon favorites. The rare lacuni prowlers improve your attack speed and are superior to the more common steady strikers by rolling an additional primary affix. Nevertheless, both bracers will make you more efficient at proccing. A crafted hellfire amulet with good rolls and a solid fifth passive like Vigilant or Fanaticism is among your best options, and only rivaled by the Star of Ascarant to protect you from molten explosion spikes. A perfect roll would include high toughness, CDR and an open socket. With no necessary rings for the remaining jewelry slots and an unquenchable thirst for additional experience throughout the season's length, you can adopt both a Hellfire Ring and a Leoric Signet, reaching a theoretical maximum of 75% bonus experience for optimal XP gain. You can substitute the latter with an Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac to assist you with cooldowns, but it will hardly be necessary as your only meaningful downtime is on toughness skills and survivability is rarely an issue. As forgotten as the primary it affects, the Golden Scourge flail resurfaces in a setup that tries to affect as many enemies as it possibly can per attack, complementing the Surge rune by jumping to 3 additional targets for a total of 8 affected enemies. This weapon ensures the best possible spread of a major proc source in the build. Thankfully the flail is craftable, so obtaining a good roll should be relatively easy. A natural roll of high strength and vitality can be perfected by rolling the guaranteed holy damage away for cooldown reduction. Friday's Wrath is the former Season 1 exclusive shield that turns the cooldown based condemn into a spender, an extremely potent effect for the build as the sky high proc coefficients of reciprocate can be abused on demand. Similarly to Golden Scourge, you will be aiming for high toughness and CDR.
Your three jewelry sockets will be taken up by the legendary gems Esoteric Alteration, Golgok of Swiftness and Moratorium. Esoteric Alteration is one of the strongest sources of elemental mitigation, bringing a welcome toughness improvement to this frontline build, improving your elemental resistances with every gem level, as well as providing you with a near impenetrable last line of defense through the level 25 property, Esoteric Alteration pulls you through the vast majority of elite FX damage spikes. Golgok of Swiftness offers perfect synergy to the build, indirectly providing the entire party with more survivability and damage by increasing your two essentials, cooldown reduction and attack speed. Your final gem slot is less clear-cut than your other choices. Any of the mitigation favorites like Moratorium and Mutilation Guard will do fine while an offense choice like Pain Enhancer will skyrocket your attack speed in big fights, but at the expense of survivability. The Kanai's Cube recommendations are as follows. Blade of Prophecy for the Weapon slot, Cinder Cold for the Armor slot, and Ring of Royal Grandeur for the Jewelry slot. The trademark weapon of Condemn builds, Blade of Prophecy triggers up to two additional Condemns with at least two targets present in the initial Condemn radius. The AoE coverage from the weapon, coupled with the reciprocate coefficients, produces a deadly chain reaction. Unable to rely on unstoppable force or set-related resource cost reduction, the proc support finds a savior in the face of Cinder Coat, its unique bonus maximized to 30% in the cube. This powerful resource management piece allows you to be trigger-happy with the fire room reciprocate. The final item that binds the incomplete sets together is the Ring of Royal Grandeur. The ability to run with a full set bonus and synergistic rings for your purposes, dodging the undesirable guaranteed stats on the Grandeur altogether by cubing its power is a tremendous boost to the build. In the Paragon points, max out movement speed to the 25% cap and max out additional resource, then spend the rest on vitality in the core section. Prioritize cooldown reduction in offense, all resistance followed by life percentage and then armor in defense, and finally focus on resource cost reduction and life on hit in utility. And this is it for the proc support crusader, I hope you enjoyed the guide and if you did, I would appreciate your subscription to my channel. Talk to me on Twitter and Facebook, link below, and I'll see you guys next time.